My precious little treasure, my beautiful and handsome daughter, you have arrived to the light of day to this world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tēnā koutou katoa. I ahu mai tēnei no te pai tokerau, no ngā puhi, no ngā tiroa nui, no ngā tirangi wewehi, o kūnei whakapapa, a ko moana eru era tō kūnei ingoa. Um, we started with this mihi mai oha, um, and mai oha and ori ori, as you all know, have inside of them protective practices. Protective practices for our mokopuna because they identify their role and their place inside their whakapapa. So they talk to mokopuna about our expectations and our vision for them as they go through their lives. And they talk about the role um, and the genders, the roles that we want them to pursue in terms of cultural roles and functions. So we wanted to start with that, um, to think about those things, those practices that we can reclaim in terms of protective factors for mokopuna. Uh, Kawi windi kawa wana tara pata tu ki te rangi. Auehi, pano, pana, haramai te tuki. Haumi e hui e tāki. Oh, my dad wrote this one down. He used to read it, uh, translated. Relationships blossom, the male and female feet, nurturing and care for our young, a role of parenthood for wellness to a bright future. Now, that came in and was embedded in some research done in, done in Taitokero, uh, Manatane Kōrero around family violence prevention. And in discussing that kaupapa, I found it was a mihi aroha to a, a lot of us that were working in the field and highlighting again the significance of uh, the mare kura whatikura role in that mai. You all have the information in front of you. I'm into brevity today. Uh, you can read where I come from. Just great to be here. Uh, Moana and I have taken time to try and reflect on this journey that we've been in, in as an organisation. And so we hopefully, after the presentation, we'll get a gist of some of the issues we've faced. Go on. So I just want you to think about uh, mokapuna, uh, tamariki, one of your own, or a child that you really value and treasure. And as you know, when, we, when they're born, they're born with Māori ora. They're born with tapu, they're born with whakapapa. They're born with mana, wairua, and many of our other constructs for ora, oranga or well-being. I just wanted to start by choosing one, um, choosing the principle of tapu. And up north in Taitokero, and I just did want to pay um, respects today to Pahina Tate, who talks a lot about the principle of te tapu o te tangata and his learning and teachings that he's given um, many of us in the room, um, but particularly that he gave us in terms of those of us from Taitokiro about being able to talk. He's encouraged us to talk about the principle of tapu. Te tapu o te tangata and the protectiveness that it can provide um, in different states of tapu um, so I just wanted to talk about the principle of tapu and commonly there are lots of different um, descriptions of tapu but in Pa's description he talks about two particular functions for tapu, the very sacredness um, of humanity, te tapu o te tangata, that exists with everybody and particularly with our babies when they're born in a tapu state but also the principle of tapu restriction and the restriction and the behaviours that protect te tapu o te tangata. 
And so when we started with Oriori, it talks about some of those protective practices. Tapu holds within it protective practices to guide behaviour for protecting mokopuna. Well, naturally, I'm going to talk about mana. Uh, and the best way I can explain it to you is in uh, 2002, we had a uh, mokopuna that was placed in the care of child, youth and family from the Rufi Fano. Uh, he was five days old and was taken from my niece. And it was just by chance that the uh, social worker dealing with the case knew that um, she had a lecturer with the same name. Nonetheless, uh, first thing you do is you check out your whakapapa connections. Uh, Takao was the <sighs> grandson of my first cousin, my dad's older, my, my, oldest, my dad's older brother, Uncle Wati, and Bill's son was my first cousin, and that was his grandson. So after getting permission from our extended father, we went to the Thui. And this child came into our care two months after, you know, with all the protocol that one's got to go through to get a kid into your care. Uh, we had, at that time already had uh, four sons and a daughter, and uh, Takao came into our home. I remember taking him to one of the local games, basketball games, and the first thing that I noticed was this kid, uh, any noise or anything like that, he just went ape, and I started screaming, and Nick and I had to take him home. And I remember realising that uh, we couldn't use the same pattern of engagement that we'd done with our children successfully to work with this mokopuna. His money had been trampled on. There had been things that had occurred while he was in the womb. Now, I don't want to go into all the stories around it, but nonetheless, the point that I'm saying to you is that money is a powerful healing tool. If you think of money and you think of one's power, honour, prestige, authority, even that child's level of influence, you know, then you can see the significance of this concept. And I'm really looking forward to some of your number crunches working out how you can measure that. And, uh, <laughs> honestly, uh, we, uh, when it comes to using it in our mahi, it's really good to be able to look at it and see it as a solid concept. But I'm, I'm keen too to engage with you to work out how we can actually take a concept like that that we know we engage with when working with children who are in vulnerable states and actually see how that sits. So we want to reclaim Māori theoretical understandings of abuse, neglect and violence. And many of you in the room will work in this field. Um, what is abuse when abuse occurs, a violation of tapu occurs? Often separating from whakapapa, often trampling mana. If we look at abuse in those ways, it directs us to respond in different ways. It, in order to understand a violation of tapu, requires you, it requires you to understand a violation of tapu in order to respond to that. So if we're thinking from te ao Māori wellbeing and we're thinking of those principles, we need to know and understand those principles to be able to restore and heal um, violation of tapu. You know, uh, just looking at that, story continuing, um, what we found was that silence was a really valuable commodity in the healing of this young child. Uh, no soft silence, no silence to be able to grow and nurture. And I remember my dad told me that each single one of us is mana. Uh, you have experiences where it comes through your whakapapa, but also there are times when you can actually do it activities that enforce the mana of your whānau and things like that. But as easy as we get it, there are many illustrations where, you know, whether it's lack of communication, resources, environment situations that we're in, uh, we can ultimately impact on someone else's and also our own mana. And I, I don't want to get into all the details around that either, but just to say to you, look, today it's uh, an interesting experience for me to come and speak to you. Um, mainly, so, I mean, I've, I've come from a place of healing myself, and um, mm, you, you don't know how powerful your mana is staring back at me, that's what I'm trying to say. It's a uh, huge uh, influence that, that you have for good as well. But we wanted to unravel this concept, and there was a lot of work that we've done in unraveling it. And 
I just know when I get into an environment and I'm with loved ones, I can feel it. It permeates. And it comes through the behaviours. It, it, you, you feel your, your own mana be nurtured in certain spaces. Well, when I met Takal and I realised I had to change my behaviour and as a father, just leaving the role up to Nikki to initially do the nurturing and things like that. I had a role as a father of nurturing him. He's 14 now, young boy, and he's uh, what you'd call a... What do you call these kids that uh, know the environment, the net, the, the city environment? He's become a... Well, you know what the word is. You can grab it, your word. But um, when I look at him, I think he's really got the smarts of a kid that knows how to move, it, move in uh, the inner city and get you on buses and knows the environment. He's an urban kid. Uh, strange from some of us who've come from the rural urban environment. But just watching him consolidate uh, certain activities that re-emphasize that he has a, a place, a voice, a space, well, that for me is like responding to the loss of mana and adding to it. I know Moana was going to talk about the context, and I just wanted to sum this up. So we've done a little bit of work, and we, we don't want to go in, into it in depth either, but just to say to you that, you know, um, we've always believed in working in a principled fashion. We've always believed that our concepts Māori, they come from a worldview that are enforced by values and beliefs that are significant to us as a people, that there would be a place where our principles would be magnified. And in the statutory environment, working with kids that have been, had their... Uh, where, where violation has been, or well, violation of tapu has occurred and where man has been trampled on, we were very strong on a belief that if we had some principles guiding us and practice Māori principles, that, that we could actually move the children towards a better space in their whānau and here. And that's what we came up with with the Tokatū Moana. Uh, it's not our work, Moana and I, it's actually a, a journey that was done inside the Tari. Probably the only thing that was missing at the time that this was constructed was make, make it, making sure that we had the voice of our rangatahi right there with us at the same time. But nonetheless, um, these, the challenge for us is looking at those principles, those guiding principles, and asking the question, so even though we know these principles are good, um, what do they look like, taste like, feel like? How can we shape them to assist us in our mahi when dealing with organisations that often ask for outcomes to mahi? And so I think the, the first part of the journey is that we have these guiding principles that all of you should know something about inside your own spaces of healing. Social work with mukupuna and whānau Māori is contentious, particularly statutory social work in that context. Um, and we think about and reflect on the many, many good leaders that we've had over the years who have put together ideas, and many of those ideas are the same ideas that we're striving for today in terms of looking at, at how do we work better with mokopuna and whānau Māori, um, who, if they do have to come into contact in, this, in the contact with statutory organisation, have a reasonable experience of being able to feel and be treated as Māori, as tamaiti Māori. So this framework um, has not been rolled out or implemented. It's been trialled in five sites. Um, and using those concepts for well-being, thinking about Māori ways of um, conceptualising um, violation and what that means we need to do to support healing to occur. The biggest challenge for us is how do we measure that? So Leland and I work mostly around practice, um, practice for working with mokopuna Māori how do we measure some of those intrinsic principles that we're talking about? Many, many practitioners, doesn't matter whether we're iwi practitioners or statutory, we know that working the principle of tapu um, and principles of mana, manakitanga, many, many of those are not for everybody and they're difficult and challenging and even more difficult when we think about how do we measure those, those principles how do we think about short-term, medium, long-term outcomes? How do we evidence that they're making a difference? Well, we'll come to the end. Time's up here too. So we'd like to finish all with something that's significant for all of us. Uh, this for me, so if you listen to the, the calls that we gave at the beginning, 
for those uh, that have come from Ngati Pray, you would know what I, what I gave. And you, those that understood the cope up of Moana's quarter to uh, Tapi, you would have understood that, so that way. So we're going to join together, both of us pack up up to the north, and we'll finish all of this. Te po, te po. Te toko toko i te nuku, te toko toko i te rangi, toki a tuki a. Ko te mumu, ko te awha, ko te mumu, ko te awha, ko te marihi kai o tata kiri pana pana karau i runga karau i raro ka faita more, i runga ka faita more. Hiraro te na ko te po, te na ko te po, te po orongo orongo mauri ora ka ora e 